There's a picture of me when I was 16. I was sat on my fairy godmother's lap. Um, and my friend, who, who he knows, he goes, she had no idea what's coming her way. Because this was like a year before I started getting really unwell. And I was like, that's so true. I had no idea what was coming my way. I first started getting on about 17, and I remember reaching out for help to begin with, but like I kind of was like in a bit of denial, and I wasn't like super. I just remember, like, I knew something wasn't quite right, so I did like look out for help because I was a bit concerned. It's nasty illness. It destroys you psychologically, physically. Her organs were giving up, her heart, her blood, liver, um, and it destroys a person. You know, the character Emily was, was no longer there. It, from then on, it just got worse. And then it's actually to where mum went to the GP and like said, this is not right. I got another call from Eden Sword Services, got admitted to hospital in Guildford. And then for the next like year and a bit, it just was spiraling downwards until I got put into Signa. And on the way to the hospital, she was holding onto my hand. I was holding onto hers because I thought, I can't let her go. <laughs> I have to, I knew I had to. And um, it, it's, that was the turning point. I think when I first I found out I got admitted, I was very like, angry, very sad, very scared. You can't go through all the emotions, really. It was definitely a lot of, like... I had a lot of anger in me, like, I did not want to go. When she was admitted to Signet, um, well, she was in a really, really bad place. Um, I was scared. You would be. Um, you know, she was really ill physically, mentally, um, and there was no other choice but her needing a proper hospital care. But my first night there, I, I remember there's like a bunch of staff kept coming in and asking me these questions. Actually, it was really overwhelming to begin with because I'm meeting all these new people um, and meeting all the staff was a bit overwhelming. But then they were quite good saying like, do you want some of the girls to come and see you? I'm like, yeah. And then once the girls came and kind of made it a bit easier and a bit nicer, it was a bit more comforting because you didn't feel so alone. And any time like, there's a certain meal that like, I remember I think one of my first real scary meals there. It was like a burger and chips and I was actually terrified. I told one of the staff members and she like sat on my table with me just to like make me feel a bit better because you know I need I just felt like I needed like a little bit of extra like yeah. You had three dining room tables, one where you have two staff members because you know they need to be observed a bit more. You have the one up was only one staff member then in they have the one where there's no staff member, but there's staff members in the dining room. And then after that is the OT kitchen where there's cameras in there, but there's no, there's no one there like physically in there observing you, making sure you finish like everything on your plate. That's all down to you. And like you could throw it away, but they will see the cameras and they will see, and then you go right back from the start again. So it's generally not even worth it. That is it. So when they can help you unpick your brain, because at the time I could unpick my brain, my brain was messed up you know and then hearing, having someone kind of help you unravel it a bit more and make it not as like jungly it's, it's nicer because you can you can breathe for a bit and feel a bit more human because you're not going through this like completely alone all the stuff was really good to be honest like you know i haven't got a, i don't have problem with any of them it was donna she uh she was really good because she was always like so straight up and she was always really there when i needed someone like to talk to or to like vent about she would just have like if, what to do was just come and give her a little look and she would just know she'd like, just give me five minutes and then I'll just go vent to her. I always remember Donna, because I've never come across anyone like her before. There was Farhan, he was <laughs> we were, he was my, my person who used to take me on walks and we found out we're both like, oh god, it sounds so cringy. Sagittarius's, you know, the whole like star sign. So we like bonded over that and then he goes like you're my little Sagittarius buddy. And he was, when it came to my A-levels, he was really good at like pushing me, saying like, you're gonna work hard, you're gonna get some A's, you're gonna, you're gonna do good in this. And you're, he was really good when it came to like my academics and kind of being, I think he saw me for like, me and my potential when I didn't see any. You know, the first time she was allowed to come home for a few hours, 
what was an amazing feeling, but at the same time you're scared because you don't want to go back where you were a few months before. Um, and um, then she came home for a weekend. Um, and she was always determined, I'm going to go all the way. It, it, Emily's journey was a long journey. When she was admitted to Signet, I didn't know what was going to happen. You hear all kinds of stories on social media. Don't listen to any of those. You go with your instincts. Because Signet actually saved Emily's life. Um, when she was admitted, she was very poorly. But Emily wanted to get better. And that is something that really helped her to get better because she worked with the hospital, with all the staff. The amount of care she got there, she needed it. And she, step by step, started using it and helping herself to get better. When she finally came home, it was late summer. Um, she had to finish her A-levels at the hospital and so she wanted to go to university. And then she came home and week after that were the A-level results. But she actually got offered all the units she's chosen, you know, on the back of the results of her A-levels. And that was an incredible feeling. She was so happy. Um, but then what do you do? She comes out of hospital end of August and supposed to start university in two weeks' time. I've been wanting to go to university for like as long as I can remember. Me and my dad have been talking about Bournemouth University since secondary school, you know, we've always spoken about that, like specific university and me going off. So it's always been like a big thing and I was already a year behind anyway because I had to do an extra year at college. Um, so I was kind of like, I don't want to wait another year. Let's just crack on and go. Leaving to go straight there, honestly, I think in my opinion, if I was to stay home, it would have, I would have gone backwards. That's how I viewed it, because everything there reminded me of my past, of what I'd done, what I did, how I'd acted. Everything was just eating disorder related. Having a complete fresh start in like, you know, the best place I could be at the time. At uni, I did go through a hard time when I had a, a wobble. I mean, I was in Bournemouth, I couldn't go back home. You know, I couldn't just leave uni, so I had to work and make myself, you know, eat more to get back to the place I needed to be at. And that was quite, that was hard, you know, because in, in hospital, you've got all the support around you. I think you don't realise how much support you have until you don't. And it was kind of then on, when I did that myself, like full on by myself, Something like switched in my brain a little bit, and I was proving myself wrong because I was like the one making myself do this. I was like, okay, like, I can do this, and it's not a problem anymore. Like it's fine. She was stopped from driving. She couldn't complete her driving test. She was literally stopped from it five days before her driving test, before she got when she got really ill. So the anorexia took away her driving ability. Uh, and she goes, then she went to university. She was concentrating on uni. So in the summer, she goes, I'm coming back and I'm gonna do my driving as well. It's been a big thing for me for so many years, you know? I've always wanted to do it. I was never able to do it. And the fact I can do it now, it just really proves like how far I've come. And that like, yeah, nothing can stop me now. I've got a car, you know? My house for Emily is she has to go all the way, okay? She's managed to beat this or put it under control. I'd love to see her graduate, getting her job, just being who she's meant to be. I can't ask for more, you know, that I just want her to be happy, just enjoy the simple things in life. I'm bored of having like two minds a little bit. I just want to have a sound mind and just be the best person of myself I possibly can. And my eating disorder is not the best possibly version of myself. It's I kind of say my eating disorder is like a little scared girl. And that's what me, my mum used to always say. Like I was like a little child. And I, when I hear that, I hate hearing that. I'm a little child, I'm like, no. Like, I'm a grown woman now. Like, let me like, no. So I think in that sense, I have everything to like push me away from it. And yeah, it just keeps me going a lot. When I, I have everything to lose at this point. When I was on I had nothing to lose. I have everything to lose. 
I'm not doing that again. I, ref I literally refuse, like playing out, refuse to lose everything I've worked so hard to build.